Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, welcome. This is Molly McCord, and welcome to Conscious Cool Chic Radio, where every Wednesday we gather to talk about the astrology and energies of right now. We look at what is going on in the cosmos, how it's affecting us personally, and most importantly, how you can make the best possible choices for yourself with this higher level of consciousness and awareness. So thank you for joining me. Today is October 31st, 2018. As I was about to go live here on the show, I was looking at the chart, of course, and I saw that the sun is at 8 degrees of Scorpio. And a part of me thought, oh my goodness, it felt like the sun should be at 108 degrees of Scorpio because it's been a really long time of Scorpio energy uh, with Jupiter in Scorpio, Mercury in Scorpio, Venus in Scorpio retrograde, and now the sun in Scorpio. So if you're feeling it too, uh, we are right on time, of course, on that giant cosmic timeline, but we're also probably feeling like it's a long time to be in the Scorpio energies. So in today's show, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what is shifting for us as we move into November. There's a lot of change going on. And we're going to see six planets and points changing signs. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Uranus, Jupiter, and the North Node. I'm going to talk about that in today's show. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about the North Node transitioning into Cancer and what that means overall. So a lot of good stuff to cover today. And uh, thank you for joining me. I know that new listeners come every week. There is a show on Mondays and there's a show on Wednesdays. On Monday's show, I just talked about human design. And just to share with you what that energy system is, how you can understand more about your aura, the energy that you are imprinted with and how to make the most of it. Uh, I discovered human design back in 2014, and I'll be honest with you, I was overwhelmed by it because it's a whole other language with all the different concepts and terms, and I thought, I don't have the energy or time to go into what all this means, and then I came back to it later. So, yes, there's a lot to learn with human design, if it resonates with you, of course, and if it's something that you want to pursue. I have found it to be wildly affirming and really great information. So that's why I offer it to you uh, with the intention that it can help you on your path, too. Another thing to share with you is that my friend Mari Kennedy is launching a year-long program called the Celtic Wheel, and it starts in the darkness. The cycle of energy begins in the darkness. And if you're interested in this journey of what it means to move through the different seasons and festivals of the year, please check out theCelticWheel.com. I'm sharing this with you because I'm going to be in this program too. I'm excited to learn about this stuff. I think it's great wisdom, uh, mythology, recipes, blessings, rituals, all kinds of awesome stuff. So if any of that resonates with you, theCelticWheel.com. Uh, It will be starting in November, but you can register, I believe, until December. And finally, if you are a healer, you are an author, a spiritual expert, a spiritual teacher, you're doing anything in the world that's helping others on their path, please check out mollymccord.online. I'm offering you a lot of resources there to build up your business online. And I also am going to have some more programs coming out for business development before the end of this year. So you'll want to be on the email list. You'll want to hear about that. Uh, This stuff has been in the works for a few years. I'm so excited because it's time, and I know that many of you are really ready to get a foundation with your business. So that's coming soon, and I just want to share that with you so that it's on your radar and you can really get some things going by 2019 and especially by 2020, because that is going to be this game-changer decade for all of us. Now, here we are today, uh, the end of October, as I do this show live, but you could be listening during the first week of November. And we're moving through energies changing. And I mentioned how there are six planets that are going to be changing signs in November. And here's a pop quiz for you. Do you know what all six 
of those planets and points have in common? No, they are not all retrograde, but all six planets and points have something in common. And this would be the time for me to do the Jeopardy theme song, but I wouldn't want to get a copyright against my my podcast, so I'm not going to do the Jeopardy theme. Um, the answer is all six of these planets have been in fixed signs, fixed signs. And the fixed signs stabilize us, okay? They give us strength. They give us a core energy. The fixed signs are where we double down, we get real, we really like go into what we need to strengthen. They are fixated. They're fixated. And so they help us stay focused on something that we're developing. Now, the fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And there are planets and points at each of those four fixed signs. Uranus has been in Taurus. The North Node has been in Leo. Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus have all been in Scorpio. And Mars has been in Aquarius. All six of these energies are moving out through November. And what that means is that you could have felt like something that you were holding, and I feel it as almost bracing yourself, like that sense of I've got to be strong, I've got to move through this, I've got to keep it together, like really like that bracing yourself, um, the energy sticking together, don't weaken, don't release, don't let go. All of that is meant to just, ease up in November, times six. And that's really significant because these are also the energies that we've been working with through the eclipses. And it'll feel like things are finally shifting in November. And I know that some of you are saying hallelujah right now because we're ready, right? It's almost like, see, the image I'm getting as of a ballerina, and how when a ballerina has to go up on her toes and hold a pose, it really activates so many muscles, right? The core muscles, the legs, the arms, everything. And they have to be tight and strong and balanced and gives that performance, and it's a very diligent performance. It's very clear. Uh, there's a lot of, obviously, strength in that. But then... After that performance, all the ballerina wants to do is collapse on the couch and release the muscle tension and release where she had to be tight and strong. It's almost just, you know, you want to sink into the bathtub, right? You just want to, or you want to get a massage. Like it's a release of that tension that you've been holding, consciously or unconsciously. And that's why it could be that you didn't realize where you were perhaps bracing part of yourself, whether that's in your energy or in your physical self. But I I just I feel like this bracing energy of like, I'm just going to hold strong. And the fixed signs give us the ability to do that. So you've been really strong through something pivotal for you. And it's probably also been challenging and uncomfortable and it's been going on for longer than you want. Uh, Even the Mars and Aquarius energy that we've been in since May, that feels like it never goes away. It's like Mars is still in Aquarius. That is going to loosen up here in November. And we're going to see new possibilities. I feel this energy as opening. Okay, it's been it's going to open up the possibilities and the potentials that were not previously available. And it's going to open you up to something else. And I believe it opens you up Okay, this is really cool. I'm getting the image of say your aura field, right? And then there's another circle, like another concentric circle right outside what you believed your aura field was. It's opening you up to that next field of 
potentials and possibilities because you've been really strong in your energy this year, perhaps in ways you didn't even realize or you didn't even want to be, uh, and yet you were forced to be. And now that next field of possibilities in that next concentric circle around your aura is opening up, and it's the freshness. And it's something different, something new. You couldn't see it before. You weren't meant to see it before. And now it comes up. And this could be also what I'm feeling is it it pertains to how you have transformed this year. Because when you're on this awakening journey and you're aware of the energies and you're tuned into yourself, it's almost like anything that doesn't relate to you in that energy it's so uncomfortable and and you can't stay there and you're like pushed to change. You're pushed to do something different. You're pushed to transform. And so much about this year with so many planets and the fixed signs have been that strengthening up of other parts of your energy um, that that perhaps you just didn't realize you needed to work on. And uh, it's a bit like you have to keep going to the gym to exercise that same muscle over and over again. Now, if you have a lot of fixed signs or energies in your natal astrology chart, then you are good with this stuff. (laughs) You thrive with the fixed energies because you're all about the routine and what's reliable, and you don't want change. You want to stay in what is known. And so you have no problem going to the gym and doing that same workout routine, you know, three times a week. Um, It's like that's, there's a safety there. It's it's what you know. And, but for the rest of us or for others who don't have a lot of those fixed signs or who don't want to do everything the same day in and day out, it has been a struggle to be like, I'm still working on this. I still have to exercise this muscle. I still have to stick with this one healing area or this one uh, you know, topic or whatever it is for you. Chances are it's a few things. It's a few things because of how the energies are dispersed. And so November brings us the letting go of where you have felt stuck in a routine. The fixed signs resist change. They can be too rigid. They can be too fixated. And they can hold back what's really for their best and highest good because they don't want to venture outside of a known safety zone. And so November brings us the new energies and this release from the fixation, the release on, it could have even felt like a relentless pressure or, okay, I'm getting the image of an um, iron pressing down on something over and over again sort of like ironing the same sleeve over and over again, or ironing, but like it feels like it's pressing down. So the iron press keeps coming down, and it's like making you stronger in some way, but it can feel relentless, right? Well, what have you learned this year? That's probably a long list of things you've learned. Uh, There could be a sense of you started this year as one version of yourself, and now you've ended the year as a whole different version. And I'll tell you that that's actually been a theme here for a number of years, especially since uh, 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. Uh, The Mayan calendar, energetically, was really all about awakening the masses. Uh, Back in that December 2012 timeline of how there was a trajectory change, it was like all these new energies opened up at a cosmic level for us to ride up. And so I see it, too, as that's when the bridge between the 3D to the 5D really opened up. It's like the masses started crossing over um, after December 2012 so that they could uh, step into these new energies that weren't available. Well, there's a sense here that what we're opening up to is, mm, how do I describe this? I'm feeling it as, Yes, we've been in the classroom where we've had to keep our heads down, nose down, do the work, focus on this, do the healing, do the energy work, learn, 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 blah, 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 right, all that stuff. 
And then I feel like when you when you actually have a minute to now look up and just relax back into the chair, it opens up this new energy field from I'm feeling it from the chest. So I would say it's like the heart chakra and the throat chakra around the new possibilities that are opening up because you've done the work related to the heart chakra, which is related to that north node in Leo. Uh, The north node in Leo has been pivotal in opening up what you really, really, really want and what is in your heart that you didn't see, that you didn't think was possible. Uh, It opens up love for self, uh, the self-expression. It opens up parts of you that maybe were shut down uh, and closed out, parts of you that you didn't think you could express in the world uh, for whatever reasons. That North Node in Leo has been giving us confidence and courage to say, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I need to do. You don't have to talk like that. But that's the energy, okay? It's like that's what has been opening up. And I feel like in November, if you take some time to pause and look up, at where you've been and where you want to go, you'll see some new things. And I'm I'm seeing it as a bridge, which is why I was getting that flashback to um, December 2012, where there was that bridge that opened that wasn't open before. And this is the same energy I'm feeling now of like there's a new bridge opening that just wasn't there before because we had to stay in a classroom and move through some things in order for the next, opening to happen. So specifically in November, Mercury moves into Sagittarius November 1st and will go to 13 degrees of Sagittarius where it will station retrograde November 16th. So we are in the shadow of Mercury retrograde, which is always a slowing down and that sense of, okay, don't push it too fast, just let some things kind of rest. Uh, Mercury is the fastest moving planet. So Mercury wants to go, go, hustle, hustle, talk, talk. And when he's about to approach a retrograde here in a few weeks, it's wise to settle down, slow down, calm it down, you know, not feel like you have to push it all forward just yet. Now, Venus enters... Libra retrograde November 1st as well. So this is also the energy shift. So Mercury's out of Scorpio, and Venus is taking a breather from Scorpio on November 1st. I feel like November 1st is a significant energy change. Uh, You might feel it the morning of. You might feel it a few days after. But it is a release from, again, something that you've been having to dig deep about and transform and work through. There's a release. And when Venus goes into Libra retrograde, she talks about things. She has more objectivity. She's able to understand, okay, this is what I was feeling. This is what it's about. I didn't see this before. So she takes some steps back to see what has been pulling her into the underworld. And she can conceptualize it differently. She can look at both sides of it, and she can make some new choices and new decisions. And she'll be doing that on November 16th as Venus will finally station direct at 25 degrees of Libra. And that will be great for all of your Venus-ruled areas of your chart. So that would pertain to Taurus and Libra uh, points and planets in your chart who are ruled by Venus. They're feeling all this. They're really feeling the Venus retrograde and they're being asked to slow down and really consider some things around money, finances, relationships, friendships, uh, the feminine energies, the feminine self, anything with feminine healing, and also looking at how Venus truly loves herself because she is all about receiving love and is looking at how you're able to receive personally and how you give to yourself as well so it's really rooted in those self-love and self-worth energies then also the middle 
of November, November 15th or 16th, depending on your location on the planet, Mars finally moves into Pisces. Now, he's not strong in Pisces. He's not strong um, in the water signs, except Scorpio. Uh, Mars going into Pisces is like, show me the nearest beach. Take me on vacation. Let's go to Margaritaville. Mars moving into Pisces is where you're like, I need a break. I need something that relaxes me. I need to escape. So, again, it's that sense of you're ready to take some steps back from everything that's been happening this year, everything that that Mars in Aquarius has had to be really diligent about. The middle of November is when that will shift. So see how right there the personal planets are all changing the middle of November. Then uh, January, or excuse me, Jupiter uh, changes signs November 8th or 9th, depending on your location, and enters the home sign of Sagittarius. I have a separate podcast episode all about that energy. Again, that will happen November 9th, and you'll feel that rising energy. Jupiter and Sag is positive, uplifting, and it says, look at what I've learned. It's all about what you have come to understand how you have grown, what you can see now. You see it from the higher perspective and higher purpose. So that will be invigorating. That's generally an uplifting energy. Uranus moves from zero degrees of Taurus. It's been in Taurus since April, April 15th. And now is going back into Aries, November 6th, which is next week. And Well, it could be the 7th. Again, depends on where you're located on the planet. And it will go back into Aries to help you gather parts of your new self and to claim them. Uranus is liberating. It's freedom. It's rebellion. It's that sense of, i got to do this for me, and I I don't want to listen to anybody else. And when that that planet goes back into Aries, it collects itself, like it collects parts of its energy field, um, and it gives it a chance to really look at, now, who, who am I in this cycle? Like, what's really truly me? And what do I want to continue to develop and carry forth? And how can I continue to have the courage to be myself, the courage to continue on my path, say, your spiritual awakening path, even if it's solo at times, when there's no one else. It's, it's a self-leadership energy. And so Uranus goes back into Aries to activate that part of your chart. And then finally we have our nodes switching energies uh, the middle of November here. And I want to talk about the nodes because I think it's important to understand the cycle here. Now, I did a uh, video for you on YouTube about the North Node interpretations. There's two different interpretations to understand because there's two ways that the the North Node is calculated. There's the true node and the mean node. And I go into that in that video. I don't want to repeat myself here. And because of the two different paths, they change signs on different dates. So the true node changes into Cancer on November 6th, and the mean node changes into Cancer November 16th or 17th. And this energy, because there's two different ways that the nodes are calculated, um, you, you could look for the energy changes on one particular date, or you could just kind of feel into it throughout the month, What I look for is where the ruler, is when the ruler of the north node makes a contact with it. And in this case, the ruler of the north node is the moon because the moon rules cancer, right? So the moon rules cancer. The moon goes into cancer on November 20. 5th, 26th, and will conjunct the north node November 27th. So the north node will really be activated in Cancer once the moon transits across it. And it might not be till the end 
of November that you really feel it. And this will determine how you work with the cancer energy in your chart um, and how this transit is working with you personally in your chart. So if you have any planets or points at 29 degrees, uh, you might feel that energy uh, throughout this month, throughout the month of November, as the nodes move from zero degrees of Leo to 29 degrees of Cancer. Now, this transition is interesting because when the North Node has been in Leo, it's been ruled by the Sun. Leo is ruled by the Sun. So the North Node is in Leo. It's about how we've been growing. That's always what the North Node shows us, what we're moving towards, what we're learning, what we're stepping into, uh, how you're stretching, how you're meant to move out of a comfort zone. And because of that, it can be challenging at times because it's meant to be something that you're continually evolving and learning. And the North Node in Leo, as I mentioned in the show, it's all about what is in your passion, your sense of self. It's been related to your solar plexus. Chakra has been related to the Leo areas in your chart. And the North Node comes through and says, learn this, learn this, go this way, go this way, expand here, expand here. And in Leo, it's been solar. The sun is solar, Leo is solar, and solar is masculine. So there's been this sense of, okay, I've been learning more about part of my masculine energies, my solar energies. And I've been able to understand more of the strength, uh, what I need to express myself. Um, it's, again, it's about confidence. It's about really getting clear about that self-identity in relationship to the masculine energies. Now, when the North Node moves into Cancer, Cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon is lunar. So now we're learning the lunar energies and the lunar is feminine. So that's one of the main transitions here, is that we move from learning the masculine to learning the feminine, from learning the solar to learning the moon, the lunar. Now, in 18 months, when the, new, when the nodes change signs again, uh, the north node will move into Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, and we'll be learning about mercurial energies okay so whatever the ruling planet is that's the energies that are highlighted around how we're learning and then we'll move into taurus and we'll learn about venus energies again and the energies in the zodiac they always rotate masculine feminine masculine feminine they're always rotating so we're continually shifting what we're learning so the the north node in cancer gives the energy to the moon and the moon changes signs every two and a half to three days, which means that how we learn and how we learn from our feelings is going to be changing every two and a half to three days. So that's why there is the trusting and the flow. That's why we open up to those feminine qualities of what am I feeling, what's coming up for me to understand, how can I trust, how can I surrender, how can I really believe in my feelings as valuable. Cancer is about how we feel about ourselves, how we take care of ourselves. Uh, it's about mother, mothering, motherhood, nurturing, uh, being your own mother, being able to find a place in the world that feels safe for you, a place where you can go into and retreat after the long day, where you feel cozy um, it's the kitchen it's your favorite couch and best pillow it's your favorite recipes cancer is where we go to be at home to feel at home and it's related to anything with the home so home projects home life anything uh, in your private world uh, that you want to put your energy towards it's related to families uh, and and the nuclear family specifically it's heart-based um, and it's about how we trust other people and the people that we can trust with our feelings, how we can be okay expressing our hearts. So the sun in 
or excuse me, the North Node in Leo, the North Node in Leo was looking at, well, what's in my heart? And now the North Node in Cancer is now, can I listen to those feelings or those intuitive messages and share those with people I trust? So it's quite a dynamic shift as it moves from the masculine into the feminine. And it's all about, of course, keeping us in balance and keeping us aware of what is in our heart so that we're not too much in one realm and we disconnect from the other. Now, the other side of this, literally, is the south node. And so the south node was in Aquarius, and that was where we saw the people Aquarius is about the people you know in the world, communities, networks, acquaintances, friendships, tribes, and what has to go. And that was a big part of the summer eclipses. The people who had to leave, the people that you were energetically done with, um, even the ideas or concepts that you were holding about the future, how you thought your life would go. I mean, that's, to me, that's like laughable because how many times have I thought I knew how my life would go? <laughs> it's like it's never gone that way. So it's letting go of where we've been too rigid around where we thought our life would be or go at this time, where we thought we'd be in life. It's letting all that go as you then bring the energy to the Leo energy of, well, this is what's in my heart now. And no matter what, I have the confidence and the ability to create what I want in life. So that south node in Aquarius is where we let go. We're complete. The south node is also where energies can feel very comfortable. There's something easy about them because we're not challenged. They can feel like that comfort zone. And they, they have something about them that can be hard to break out of, can be hard to get away from, hard to step out of. So the south node now moves into Capricorn. And what's interesting here is that the south node is moving through outer world energies. The south node moving from Aquarius to Capricorn. These are outer world energies, like how your energy impacts the outer world, what you do professionally, um, the bigger picture. And so the south node, in a collective sense, is clearing out what is stale and stagnant in the outer world. And we see that. We've seen that for a while now, but it's really coming up here. And so the south node moving into Capricorn means that in 2019 and 2020, there will be conjunctions with Pluto in Capricorn and Saturn in Capricorn. And those are about the structures of our world. Those will be the institutions, companies, uh, politics, governments that are ready to go. And this is not new, right? We've, we've, you can see it coming because it's already showing up and it's already unfolding. Um, Angela Merkel just said she is not going to be Uh, The German Chancellor, she's going to be stepping down in a few years. Uh, It was rumored that Queen Elizabeth will be stepping down in a few years. Uh, There's big changes happening, of course, with Brexit. Uh, There's big things that have always been been going on with Greece. Of course, the United States is undergoing big changes in government and politics. Uh, All over the world, there's things that are coming up, right? And it's kind of all coming to a head. And it's really going to be changing permanently in 2020 and beyond because it's time, because these are all 3D paradigms built on the few having the power, built on certain values that are no longer true, that are no longer inclusive of humanity. And you can just look at how humanity has grown to billions and billions of people. And and there's different values now. There's different ways that we all communicate, right? There's just, The world is a different place, and so many of these structures were built on old energies that are now expired. And so on the one hand, it can be great to think, okay, we're going to change this stuff, we're going to end some patriarchy out there, we're going to end some corruption, there's not going to be the same power dynamics, these systems are going to change, but that's 
not going to be fast, and it's not going to be easy, and it's going to really bring up some big things and some big revelations. And uh, we're going to see some stuff about individuals and people that are not in the mainstream, that you didn't realize uh, were part of what was going on behind the scenes. Like, for example, last week there was that bomb scare, right, where these, what is it, 12 bombs that were sent to different members of the Democratic Party. That's not what it looked like on mainstream uh, media at all. Like, that had nothing to do with the politics that you might think it does. It has to do with how every single person who got one of those bombs is connected to something that's darker, that's not in the public eye, and it was kind of like, this is going to blow up in your face pretty soon. It was like this warning. That's what those explosives were. It was like this warning. And that's that's kind of like the fall from grace, that you don't know who people are, and there can be a public persona, and you didn't realize that's what what they were doing behind the scenes, or that's what they were really all about. And it's that kind of stuff. I mean, it's we've been seeing it already. Uh, with the Pluto and Capricorn, about the fall from grace, uh, or not always grace at all, like these people in high positions of power who have been doing corrupt, abusive, shameful things for decades, and it all coming to light. There's more of that coming. There's more of that coming from politicians that you perhaps voted for or you thought were one person. They were not that person. Um, There's been times I've been watching a show, and I'm like, that isn't that person at all. Like, it feels like there's a body double. Like, is it, do they have a body double? That was energetically what I was feeling. I'm like, there's something wrong about this energy. So there's, like, things that are going to be revealed. I mean, that's just part of this playground that we're in. And there's things that aren't disclosed yet. And I don't mean cosmic disclosure, which, which of course, is part of what's coming through um, is how we are not the only beings on this planet and that there have been beings for decades and decades um, who have been known and who have been, um, that it's been kept from the public to not create fear, to be used as a power ploy and different intentions around that. But this is more about looking at this is our home, And the North Node in Cancer says, what does home mean to you? What do you protect? What do you defend? What do you believe in? Uh, Because it it matters to your heart. And where do you follow that? Where do you trust that? Where does that at a gut level feel right for you? So we're going to see a lot more coming up as the South Node moves through Capricorn and requires a lot of structures and roles uh, to be ended and to be completed. And we perhaps will finally see publicly how some of these people are all connected and how they've been connected to other energies and forces behind the scenes and that those, like, the time is up with that. It's sort of like, again, that bomb exploding There's some really, I'm going to say really dark, evil people who have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. (laughs) And they can do whatever they want. And they can own political parties. And they can destroy countries. And they can destroy governments. And they can get away with a lot of abuse. And those are the people that will be exposed. And then it's like from there, it kind of see like this domino effect where like then you see who's connected to all that and who knew about all that and who's participated in all that. And it's just mind-blowing. It's like, oh, my God, like what is going on here? We had no clue. We didn't know. But now we know and now we build based on what is best for everyone involved. And that's all going to be a part of the next few years into the next decade, of course, and where humanity is ready to restructure itself and to restructure what is essential to the planet. And I know how politics have become a really big theme in terms of like self-identity. Does a tree identify with politics, right? Does, does the ocean 
can have to connect with a certain party. Like it's almost like where have we gone too far, or, or where have things gotten so out of balance? Because they're also set up to fight. That's also part of how a lot of political um, structures are established is so that there's always a good guy and a bad guy. That's why there's two parties, not three. So it, it keeps things in that state of tension. That's all what needs to change. Um, the European Union, that's going to be going big through big changes. Uh, China, obviously, is already um, – doing big things, and that can be a power, a superpower, if left unchecked, can do some real harm. Um, there was something reported online recently about China's going to raise up their own moon, like create their own full moon that's launched into orbit. And I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. I mean, is that real news or fake news? But can you imagine how horrible that would be for nature and all the animals who rely on the moon, and it changes their rhythms, all that. It's sort of like, where is it too far? Where have things gone too far because of our own innovation and, and what's possible? So that's just a, you know anecdotal example. But that's part of what we're looking at here. What do you need and what do you not need in your life? And what do we need in our world? And what do we not need? You know, where, where are we saying, nope, don't need that, you got to go? That's also part of the south node moving through Capricorn, where we say, nope, got to go. You've got to go. This has got to go. We don't need this structure. We don't need this anymore. It doesn't really serve humanity now. So welcome to November, because this is a time when we're going to have new possibilities, new insights, new energies. This is when you're going to be able to see things differently for yourself that you perhaps, again, you couldn't see before. It's that concentric circle around your aura that's going to open up to expand you. That's also part of the Jupiter in Sagittarius energy, which is all about expansion and the positivity and enthusiasm, and it can really be too much as well. So throughout this month, it's also important to stay grounded and to know where you need to rest and you need to cut back and you need to just take a break. We have the new moon in Scorpio coming up November 7th. I uploaded a video to YouTube for you on that. It's a separate video going through those energies. The new moon in Scorpio is at 15 degrees of Scorpio and it has great cosmic support. It is trining Neptune it is sextiling Pluto. It is giving you energy and the ability to keep transforming, to stay in your power, to follow the passion and to let something die, to let something leave or something go so you can keep moving into what is really true for you right now at this point in the energy spiral. So there's a sense here that there's there's big things happening, you know, it's still transforming, it's not going to stop, but you're feeling hopefully stronger after what you've been through this year, what you've changed, what you've been forced to change, what you've been working on. And November and this first week of November bring us that sense of I can relax. Like, I don't have to hold that ballerina pose. I don't have to stay rigid. I can relax into more potentials. And, and that you might just need a break. Uh, you could feel that too here in the first week, that you just need a break. So trust that for yourself. Trust those messages. Trust what you need. And trust that... This is a month of dynamic changes and release. And a, you, if you want to just be open to it, you may be surprised at what shows up and, and how things can feel like they ease up too. They ease up and loosen up. So I don't know about you, but I am ready for that. So bring it on. And we'll continue our conversation next Monday. We'll talk about another healing theme. And then, of course, next Wednesday, we'll continue with more of this astrology and what's happening here 
as we take it each day of each day at a time in November. Thank you for joining me, friends. I so appreciate your energy, your contribution, and your time. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next show.